episode of Electrical Theology, Esoteric Life Coaching. I am your host, Charles. Thank you. Thank you for joining me again. If you're new, like, subscribe. Uh, if you like this content, go ahead and hit the notification bell. And as well, look at all the links I have below. So with that being said, let's get on with the reading. Okay. Hopefully everyone's doing pretty well today. Uh, I just did upload a couple more videos. One is about uh, how to do a medical intuitive reading. And then another one was about uh, money. So if you like those topics, go ahead and watch those last two episodes. And as well, if you haven't, if you're new to the channel, and if you haven't seen um, my older stuff, is just go ahead and look at some of the older stuff um, that I did three months ago, two months ago, because all that stuff is still relevant, or it'll help you understand what we've been progressing through from the uh, disruption in our life to isolating ourselves, coming out of that isolation, and then going and coming out again after the storm, and then look at the destruction of the storm, and then see how we can reconstruct. And this is all about you and your life. Uh, and not, not the external life, but your internal life. But it, the external life does play a part on how you, your next chapter is going to go. The next chapter that you create in your external life, or your exoteric world, is going to be directly linked to your conscious esoteric world, your internal world. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and it's about manifesting what's inside, outside, with full consciousness. Right? And so now we've come out of the cave, and it's very important now uh, that you pursue, that you keep pushing, persevering, right? Perserve, if you will. Perseverance is to perserve or serve, right? Your cause to go into the future, if that makes sense, guys. All right, let's get started. Immediately we get the healer of the ages upside down. We get the seventh chakra again. And then we get rest and rejuvenate. Now, for me, the healer of the ages is, uh, is in the reverse, which tells me that we're, we're done with the healing aspect. That's why we're out of the cave now, because we licked our wounds, and now we are more, we're stronger, and now we're going forward. And it does have rest, uh, or the, but the seventh chakra is what we got to pay attention to. That's sort of the present moment. Or the mental and the seventh chakra, of course, y'all know the crown chakra, purple, um, violet, violet energy. And that, in essence, is telling us that's what we're creating, right? Is our highest, right? The highest self uh, into this world, right? We're beginning to integrate into this world fully. So that means you should have already started opening up, or things are beginning to open up a little bit for you after all this destruction, reconstruction, flooding, droughts, everything. Uh, and I know some people in the real world are always dealing with that stuff, but we're at this point now talking esoterically where you had your floods, your tears, your emotions, your expressions, uh, dealt with your stuff, right? Dealt with your shit and the fuckery of everything. But now we're tapped into our higher frequency, which means because the, the consciousness of the universe has put out or opened up or called us to go to the next higher realm. And that next higher realm is, that's where you're getting your call and your intuition should be coming back online. Your guidance, your inner guidance system, your compassion or compass, right? And that word compassion is compass, come pass ion. So your passion is in the same direction, right? As your esoteric uh, life is leading you to this answer the call to get to the higher frequency. That being said, direct, relax and re rejuvenate is we're going to want to maybe pick up like our old self uh, when we create this new thing or we're in the process of creating this new thing and things are beginning to open up. And our old self is like, okay, let's, let's go, you know, balls to the walls, right? That, or I'm only speaking for me there. Is I would just start the project and go, 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 go. <laughs> Right, because the quicker I can get it going, the quicker I can get money coming in. Right, that's my old mentality, and this mentality is just to relax. Right, 
And what you're doing should be rejuvenating your soul. Right? Everything that you're doing going forward, yes, you can work long hours if that's what you just like doing, or you can go at a certain pace, whatever your soul's calling you to, or that the external world says, okay, your energy's coming in at a higher frequency, we're still at a lower frequency, and so your fast frequency is going to uh, con make com uh, confrontations happen. Right? We've got to confront the ions, front the ions, fronting energy. So the old energy is going to resist us, right? They're going to resist our new way of doing things. So this is where, if it gets stressful, we're not looking at it from the old perspective. It says, oh, more shit happening. No, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that uh, we're going to recognize when we need to relax, rest and relax. Uh, rest and relax. Uh, because that's going to be a scientist that, that says, hey, just slow down a little bit. Just sit, sit with it for a moment. And let them feel your new energy, and then it will break. Uh, this, as a massage therapist, you get onto a muscle, and that muscle's really hard, and it's not moving. You don't dig deeper. You, you put a little more pressure, and you just sit there with it, right? And you let your muscle, you let their muscle talk to you, your hands. And it will let you know when it's time to release, right? And by taking deeper breaths, rejuvenating that life force within you. And by doing so, when we have that client breathe, then that energy can just move out, right? Or that muscle will relax. And then, you know, you'll go forward, right? So this is how uh, the external world, we need to put a little pressure on them, right? And then just hold, relax. Right? We're, we're, we are relaxing. They're the ones who stress them, but we're just going to relax. And eventually they're going to like, you know what? That is a good idea. Let's go with it. You know? And all of a sudden... The, uh, if you're building something, the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the regulation, the uh, permits and whatnot will go through quicker, right? But if you go in there with the old way and the old mentality and fear come in, you know, and, and desperation, uh, that's just going to kick you out completely, right? But if you just relax, rejuvenate, right, in that, in that moment of stress and understand that this is your internal self creating and confronting the external creation that you've created or the way you used to perceive this old creation, right? Because it's not society itself you're, about, you're, you're confronting, it's your old way because what you're confronting is your old perceptions of the way it used to be. So if you just relax, right, breathe into the moment, unfold that moment, and all of a sudden everything will break free. Right? What you were waiting to sell on eBay will sell. What the car you were selling is going to sell. Or the building that you really love comes available all, all of a sudden. Or just the perfect opportunity. Alright guys, so that gives us an idea of what is happening right now. So let's get further information. I do want a little more information on the 7th and the uh, restroom uh, rejuvenate. We'll see if both of them come up. But we'll start reading with the... Uh, Seven chakra, right? Because that's come up a few times, so that means we got to go ahead and pay attention to that. Because okay. there's something happening right now. And from what I can tell, is that you should not be lazy right now. You should already be putting something forward, right? Again, if you've been an impatient per, uh, per, uh, person and you want things to happen instant, instant uh, because of fear, we need to check into that, breathe into that, and go, okay, no, for what reason do, am I freaking out, right? Because who's controlling those thoughts? No, you are, of course. All right. So immediately we get the Four of Wands which is much like relax and rejuvenate, we're going to have to reflect on what's, uh, what we're encountering. And again, we're doing this under the seventh chakra, Archangel, Archangel Uriel. And then we get the uh, lovers upside down. So some of y'all haven't made the choice to go, right? The last video too, I'm like, you got to make a choice and it's time to go now. It's time to quit just sitting around. Let's do something, right? You should already see some openings happening. If you're not, you need to ask why. Or leave me comments down below or get in contact with me. We can have private readings and see what's happening for you. But for right now, we got the lovers, which is a choice. 
And so maybe it's something you're trying, you're, you're, you're stalling, not purposefully, but because you're not sure what you want to do yet, right? You're not sure what choice to make. Right? I have a lot of choices I'm putting in motion. Some of them are opening up. And when one or two of them open up, I'm like, I thought maybe this was the direction, but it doesn't feel like it. So there's a stall, right? But that's not a forced stall. That's like, you know, this is what I thought I wanted, if, you know, but some of that could have been created from old thought, fear thought, lack thought, right? And now that I push forward and it's starting to open up, it's then it's like, ah, do I really want that? It's sort of like the chase is, is more fun than when you catch something, right? The players only play, right, when it's fun or whatever that saying is from Fleetwood Mac. Uh, players only play when they want you, right? But as soon as you get it, you're like, eh, now I'm bored, like a dog chasing a tire. But anyway, so there, there's some somewhere that we need to reflect on the next choice we're making. And then we get the star uh, in the reverse as well. So maybe for some of y'all, uh, you think it's hopeless to even do some of this thinking to put these new thoughts out there. But again, if you're having a hopelessness uh, thought, that's still old, right? At some point, you're going to have to step up. It's plain and simple. you got to step up. Put on your girl, big girl boy panties or whatever. Step up and then say, hey, I just got to do this. Right? I just got to make the move. Right? But some of you all think there's no hope. Or you finally understood that it's not about hope, faith, trust, or belief. I understand those words from the old school. But the new school, there's no for me, there's no trust, faith, or belief in, in society's ways of those words. For me, um, I'm in charge of what I'm putting into motion. So I don't hope I put something. I don't hope I put a choice out there. No, I'm the one putting the choice out there. So we eliminate hope altogether. You see what I'm saying? Because hope is, is saying that we don't have it, that we don't trust in the divine. Right, the internal divine or the external divine, right? And then we're going to get the uh, ten of stones in the reverse, right? And this is all rainbows and sunshine here, right? So the rainbows and sunshine, by not getting caught up in the old school thinking of hope, faith, trust, belief, and all that stuff. That is still coming from a scavenger's point of view. Like, you're, you're begging to the universe that, please, please, please give me this. I just hope you'll give it. I have faith you'll, you'll give me this. Once you mature past these, these words, these empty words that society uses, and you can reframe these words that fit best for you, because they're great words, right? For me... Faith is knowing that behind the scenes, the cosmic scenes, things are flowing. Why? Because everything's flowing. Now, how they are specifically, I don't need to believe, but if I were to use that word belief in my own vocabulary, it's because um, belief is I'm the one who put the thought into motion. Right? The energy in motion of thought, if I'm thinking a thought, it, it, it is in motion. And now that it's in motion, my faith, behind the scenes, the cosmic scene, before something becomes manifested, it's in the unmanifested or the manifesting realm, right? I know all that's working, right? Uh, just like right now, you, Walmart or Target or wherever you shop um, is open right now, right? Do you, I don't need to see that. I don't need to have faith that it's open. I don't need to believe that it's open. I don't need to hope. You see what I'm saying? Walmarts are open. So I'm 24-7, right? Even when the country got shut down, um, it was still open. <laughs> you see? So for me, by when you are ready to make that choice, and if you did make a choice and you're like, you know what, maybe that's not what I really wanted. Now for me, um, one day I, I want something and I, I'm like, yeah, that's my choice. I'm committed to this choice. And I'm like, yeah, and things start moving instantly. And then the next day I'm like, eh, I don't, I don't really want that today. And so for me, because I'm on so many cusps in the astrology world, I'm literally on a cusp on everything. My moon sign, 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 uh, my um, ascending is all on a cusp. So I got like six different energies, you know, signs that I have to look at. Then my north node and south node is another whole thing. And so I really have all the zodiac active all the time. And so one day I'm, I'm pumped about something and it is my passion. And then the next day it's not, but something else will be. 
and then the next day it may be something else. So for me, I, I did a video long ago, you may have to look it up, or I may put a link if I find it. But it's basically, um, it's not ADD or, or these labels. What it is is that we want, it, we're not, we're not just doing one thing in this life. We're doing many things, right? One thing bores us, right? Ten things excite us, right? Twenty overwhelms us, but ten excites us. Because in this world today, we need ten different things going at once. Because they, they being whoever, can shut down one part, but the other parts are still going. So we need to have five different ten different sources of income or uh, ways to bring in money in that in that sense um, or God energy again it's all the same to me but who's directing that to happen so then we get another four we had the four of wands and now we get the um, four stones reversed and this is all about peace right a, a solidity a ground in this um, and now that we have the ten of stones over here and then we get the four stones there's sort of a conflict but to, in order to get the uh, riches that you're after, is one, is hone into these choices. And if one day it's like, yeah, I like this. But it's not, just write it down, put it in a notebook and put it to the side. And then the next day if something else pops up, put that in the book and put that to the side. And then eventually uh, the first one will always come back around. At least for me, right? And that's how I've done my whole life, right? So I go in wave because I do want to do so many different things. So my life says, okay, to this this cycle we're doing this, which could be months, days, or years. It says, okay, we're going to do this. And I'll keep doing it until I'm excited. Or I don't want to do it, I'll back off and I'll hand it off to somebody else or sell it or just close the business or whatever. Or whatever project. Uh, I like guitars and then I'll get on a guitar kick and play for six months. And then I'll wake up the next day and I'm like, eh, I don't want to play it. <laughs> You know, I'm a big music buff, but in the last three months, I haven't wanted to listen to the radio at all, right? So I go in cycles, so I've learned to recognize these cycles. So to help with your decision and not get caught up in fear-based mentality is look, in the, look at the richness of this relax and rejuvenation time. When you're not sure what the next step is, you have your list, you have your book set aside that says, okay, let me look at any of these and see if any of these are, are, are striking me right now. And uh, so part of this is becoming grounded in your own way of operating. So this is understanding and getting consciousness about your internal operation system. All right. And then again, great, we get the sun, the life. So awesome. And again, this goes into a relationship. And I'm not getting family around here, so I wouldn't say this is about marriage necessarily. But because we have the four stones in reverse, but we do have the sun underneath the ten, um, when we're ready to make the choice, it, it's happening, right? The energy is right now is, is to do your due diligence, your perseverance, to push forward, right? And if you do get resistance, just relax and breathe into it in that moment, and it and it will start instantly opening up, right? If you are getting huge resistance, check in with yourself and see if you're coming at it from an insecure point of view. But if not, then it just may not be your path. And how do you distinguish? That it's not your path, start another path. Another idea you had, another passion you have, right? You're just not a one passion person. Everyone has multiple passions. So tap into another passion and start putting that one into motion. Because you never know that this, this first one can't go any further until you get this other one going. And they're totally not even connected right now. But you start putting that second one into motion and that leads back to the first one. See, that, that's my faith. There's things working behind the scenes that my little conscious mind here in the in the matrix just doesn't have access to that program yet. Right? So for here, there is a union coming. There is a marriage coming of um, me and my passion. But like a wedding, there's many moving parts. Right? There's the bride side, the groom side. So in here, there's the transmission, there's the reception, there's the... Action, and then there's the nurturing, the rest and relaxing. All right? Let's see if anything uh, is blocking us. So the Six of Wands. Six of Wands are normally a, a victorious um, energy. But it's in the reverse. So we're not celebrating the small victories, is what I'm getting off of that right off the bat. Uh, you're not celebrating the little moves that are happening. You're still bitching about the old moves not happening. right? Or you're bitching or fearful about the new ones not happening. 
So just, you got to take time, relax and rejuvenate and go, okay, what things have moved? And then honor that, right? And then we get the Empress. So that's a good sign. The Empress is all, uh, in one sense, about um, nurturing the process of how to manifest. It is nurturing getting everything in order right now. If you're, the way you're putting in, the, the way you're mixing the ingredients will determine how your cake comes out. If you're angry and throwing stuff and not uh, strategizing, not feeling a little pinch of salt, right? The grandmas used to cook by feeling, not through recipes, right? And then we try to create that with left brain and go, well, I'm following the direction, but it didn't turn out. Why? Well, because it, it combines both left and right brain to create or manifest your dream, right? We need both transmitters and receiver. And so the Empress is here to help us nurture, right? When you do encounter something, nurture yourself in that moment. That's taking, that's the victory we just talked about with the Six of Swords, is we take the small victories. Like, okay, you know, I felt angry in that moment, but I stopped, I breathed, and I was like, okay, I'm the one thinking this thought, I'm the one being triggered, so what is it? Well, why is this thing, this event triggering me? And then just by, just by going there with that thought, you release it. You feel the energy releasing. You're like, oh my God. It's like little effervescent bubbles leaving your body. All right. So let's see. Again, great. So we had the Six of Swords uh, in reverse. And just by talking about this, we get the Eight of Swords, which is, it's going to happen fast. Right? When you finally do, when you release this stuff, when you go forward and you get encounter some uh, confrontation, then just stop, relax, breathe. Right? Who's thinking the thought? Who's, who's getting stressed? Well, you are. Right? So at the same time, um, we get the Eight of Swords, which is organization, swiftness. So when you start organizing and quit bitching, and when you start organizing and strategizing, boom, it's going to happen. So you've got to be ready. For what, if you say you really want something, are you organized if it came right now? If you say, okay, um, I want to start a holistic center and I'm ready to have the building, I'm ready to go. All right, the building comes available, but you're like, oh crap, I don't even know what I'm going to do with the center. I don't even have a name. I don't even brand it yet. I don't know who's my audience. Right, so yes, you may be bitching about you want something, but are you prepared if it were to come right now? Right, we've talked about this in the past. And then we get the moon upside down, so which means there is a a, a shadow uh, event hanging over you still that you're still holding on to, which we need to swiftly be done with it uh, by nurturing it and then uh, praising that victory, right? So if you're having a problem with a person, place, or thing, and how you feel about it just by releasing it, Right? By just thinking and going, you know what, it's my thought. I'm thinking this thought. I'm the one feeling this way. I'm the one thinking the thought to make me feel this way. And just by saying that, you open up and your lungs open up and you take a deep breath and your shoulders relax and you're like, ah, oh, I like that. That was awesome. And so the swiftness of that's going to happen. So therefore, the swiftness of your manifestation in the physical realm or the matrix is going to happen like that. Right? So we need to... Um, address the shadow now again for me shadow is not negative a lot of people associate oh i don't want to deal with my shadow stuff well you're you're looking at your shadow because these people are telling you that it's a shadow negative thing it's not your shadow is part of you so your shadow is part of you right shadow doesn't exist without light Right? Because what's causing the shadow? Right? So knowing that if you're putting negative connotations towards your shadow, then you're putting negative connotations to a part of you, which means you're not loving you, which means you're, you're feeling that you're less than. So by having the ability to look at your shadow, right, to know that it's being created because of the light right it's trying to get you to look at a part of you that are you ready to bring into the light 
to take away the, the, the thing that's creating the shadow, the, the thing in between, right? So if I put my hand in front of this light, then this hand gets a shadow, but they're both hands. You see what I'm saying? But do I need to bring this one out and use my left hand or my nurturing side or my intellectual side, however you all you want to see it. Some people think the right side is dominant, which is father energy. Some think the left side is mother energy. And again, the brain, right brain operates the left side. Everyone's got their version of it, right? But for me, everything's rotating. Everything's alternating. So there is, it, there is no static side to one or the other, right? My point to that then is understanding that shadow is not negative. We need to love and put a, a, a new, brighter light on our shadow. Instead of taking someone else's thought about what shadow is, create a new thought that your shadow is part of you. It's there for a reason. It wants you to look at it. It's there to help you grow. right? And once you access this and uh, understand this, then your dreams are start coming true pretty fast. Things will get in order um, because you're choosing, again, to nurture that part of you, which we're going to celebrate the small and big victories because with swiftness, there comes, uh, with the eight of wands, there's, there's swiftness, and we get the six of wands, and we get the four of wands. So a lot of stuff I'm seeing here is going to go really quick, which means that as soon as you manifest from your highest self, that stuff's coming in. And because it's going to come in fast, it may catch you off guard. And then you're going to like, oh, I'm, I'm going to observe the situation as negative. Uh -uh. That's because you're still observing your shadow as negative. No, my shadow is there to not burn me. If the sun's blaring me all the time, I'm just going to burn my skin. So I want the shadow. You, you understand that now? The shade is what protects us from direct heat. Your, your crown chakra is the brightest, if you will. It's the hottest, right? Red is slow vibration. Um, Violet's very fast. You get more uh, cycles per second, which means I can cram more information. I can tap into one second of, of the higher realms and get volumes of information. But in the red realms, it may take me about 10 minutes to get the same amount of information. Right, so the swiftness that's coming up is going to happen real fast and it's going to be packed full of energy and ideas and it's going to want you to move faster. And sometimes to get things done quicker, you have to move slower. I know it's a paradox, right? So slow and steady here wins the race, so we need to make sure that we're organizing. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I appreciate you joining me. If you have any questions, if any of these cards in particular you want more information on, link in the description or uh, leave a comment and then uh, check out some of the links in the description and go ahead and share this video with everyone and I appreciate you showing up each and every day with me and I would love to hear more from you comment down below so I know exactly what kind of readings y'all like right? or if you like the readings I'm doing just let me know leave me a comment that says yeah everything's perfect don't change keep doing it right because I always evolve and I want to do things better right i want to come from the seventh chakra and give these readings all right so peace love each and every one of you um it's a little hard sign right yeah there's a hard sign uh and i'll see you tomorrow